So um, this morning I'm giving a workshop on creating R packages. But we changed that because I think it's easier and more interesting for people than what I was going to do, which was about building our, our toolkit. Um, I think building our toolkit is interesting because the way we operate has been very valuable and very efficient and, and, and interesting for us. Um, and I'm just going to show you the toolkit that we have. And that's kind of motivation for why you create our packages. Um, and this is primarily a toolkit that we, we only use within our institute. Um, but we've worked to make it usable outside of that. Um, and I didn't set this up, so. So first of all, one of the things we're very motivated by in ecosystem modeling in the Southern Ocean is, is animal tracking. And so one of the animals we study is, is elephant seals. And so they have these kind of remote um, populations on sub-Antarctic islands and in Antarctica. And they swim for thousands of kilometers across the ocean. So, so simple oceanographic variables like sea surface temperature and ice concentration densities are, are of deep interest for why are these animals going where they are? Um, and we track them with light level techniques, with geolocation, um, with Argos satellite triangulation, and, and, and more and more now with GPS. Um, but what that looks like, so it's not so abstract, is So I just have an inbuilt data set that is called Mirunga Leonina, and I'll call that seal. So it's a data frame in R. It has an ID for each tagged individual, it has a date time, a location quality class from the service we use to track it, and a longitude latitude estimate of where it was. And If I look at the world in the wrong way, <coughs> with the simplest kind of plot, you can see that it's a significant area that these animals visit. So there's really big regions. Um, and from a very small island, from Heard Island in, this, in the Indian Ocean, Two animals made very different choices about where to go to forage. And they, we know they're foraging because it takes time to exist, like time is energy. They swim very quickly to the, to the coast and they spend a lot of time down there. That's, that's really probably where they're foraging. But lots of these animals make really other complicated decisions about where to go. Um, and that's one of the things that the people I work with are trying to figure out is why do they go where they go and how do they know? And this is, this is, this is not wrong just in plat Carré terms. It's, it's wrong because there's no three, third dimension. So this is thousands of kilometres, maybe 1,500. But, but they are diving to one or two kilometres down and c continuously. So if you think this is where they're going in, in geography, in, in, in reality they're, they're constantly going up and down. And that's how they live. Um, but one of the things we might want to do is find out what, what is the temperature of the surface of the water where they are and what is the sea ice concentration. And it's complicated because, because of that. Every single position has to look up a different bit of raster data or a bit of remote sensing or a bit of a model. And so we created a thing called RAD tools or R-A-A-D tools and that means R Australian Antarctic Division 
tools. But it's, it's not just about the Antarctic Division. And the kinds of interfaces we have in there are functions called read ice, read SST, and there's a whole lot of them, so help. How does that work? Library equals spread tools. What's the argument? I'll just use the index. Read all that stuff. So each one of these functions is a function of date, and that's all you really need to know to use it. But you can also give it an XY limb so it'll read out the bit you want. And we have a lot of functions. So the, 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 we have read currents, read chlorophyll. That's too small, but um, we have a couple of dozen functions there that read really common remote sensing variables as a function of date. Um, and not because that's easy, it's because we build a data library with all those files in it and we keep it up to date every day. Um, and that part of RAD tools has become a thing called Bowbird, which is an R open sci project. And that sounds, fu it sounds funny, like keep a collection of, of data sources. It sounds very abstract. But for us, it's, it's like, how do I get that SST data? How do I get ICE data? How do I record what I learned about reading that data so that I can just use it? Um, and using Bowbird as a, as a way of aggregating data so that you can then put your tools on it is really what I was thinking of talking about. But I'm going to talk about our packages generally. Um, these functions are interesting because they'll give you a raster, so it understands that it's in a funny projection. So this one's in polar stereographic. This one's defaulting to the first day we have, which is 1978, October. If I ask it for a different date or for a more recent one, That works, and there's thing you know. I happen to know that this is a daily data set, so I know that I know the kind of query I'm asking. This is 2001. It's it's pretty low resolution data, um, but I can also just say latest equals true, and find out what is the latest. So it's the 3rd of September, which is a few days ago, and Bowbird is making that work for me. Um, if I plot that, and I'll get an SST one as well, but this time I'll do x, y, lim equals range, sealed all along. Range, sealed, all that, so that I restrict it to where the, the data about the seal is. Plot, SST. And this one's a different grid. You know, it's, this one happens to be a quarter of a degree. It's in longitude, latitude. But it's the same, it's the same area. It's where the seals went. Um, line, seal, dog. So we can hone in quickly on, on what the animal's seeing from an environmental perspective. Um, if I read ice, it's harder. Like I have to know ex in expert terms that this is a polar stereographic grid. And if I want to match up where the seal was. Oh, God. So it's the same region. But it's, it's here in a pole view. And I, I have to know how to transform the, the, lat the long lats of the seal data into that. And so I... Um, GDAL project, C-bind, 
long lat. The projection of the ice. And that'll make the right plot. You know, and, and the interesting thing you learn about this data set is the, the grid data itself stops about here, so we don't necessarily are able to look it up for a particular thing, but where the animals are doing their interesting behaviour, we have data about the ice concentration. And that's really significant, yeah? But I haven't done anything with time, right? So these seals were there in 2013, over several months. And if I want to find out what the ice concentration or the SST is, I've got to go and download all the files and, and then figure out the mapping between the coordinates and the grid. And I've got to figure out the mapping between the time of the seal track and the time of the file. But because we have all the files, and I have a function for each of this, which is ice files, I've already got a kind of a map of what's available. So I have the day, date, time of what the file is. I have a link on our, on our file system to, the, to that exact file. Um, these ones are in binary format. So they don't have a format. You've just got to read them with raw tools and then turn them into geographic information. Um, but because I have all that kind of indexed and, and sorted, then I can do abstractions like what is the temperature of the water at the surface where the seal was? So seal dollar SST. And I extract on a function read SST. Because I can go and read the corner of the globe that the seal visited. I know how to do that, but I can just make a function to do that for the times. And I need to tell it seal Uh, long, lat, and I've forgotten what the column's called. Long lat date. And an extract method for a function in RAD tools just simply knows to go and find which file matches that day and find the, the SST for it for any SEAL location that we have. And, you know, it takes a bit of time and some data sets are faster than others, but when I have a lot of seals and a lot of data to work with, I can just go and let that job happen. And the interface is longitude latitude. So if the if the grid's in another projection, the function just turns that into the projection of the grid and looks it up. Yeah, I found that very odd. You know, when I thought of it, it's like, that's really odd. But the, f the function knows about the data. I, I, I made the function know about the data, about the format. I don't want to think about it anymore. Yeah, it's just odd that you have met the on the class function. Yeah, I can't, I can't see a better way to do it. A better way to do it would be to have an SST object that's free-floating and just keeps updating. Yeah, and that's, that's what you're doing. We'll do that. It's taking longer than I wanted, but I'm going to show the time series as a final plot, and then I'm finished. It's too slow. And, you know, it's, it's right. That's, that's a spurious warning. I have to be careful with vector fields. So we have, we have surface currents, and they, they inherently come in U and V components, so you have to do those separately just because of raster problems, but stars will fix that. I have a read ice function, so I just stick it in there. Just 
usual kind of mistake. This one's faster, because each file's tiny, like it's about half a megabyte, and we just read it in raw binary. And the point of that is that now I have a very different view of these seal, the seal experience. So rather than plotting a map, if I plot a time series of its longitude, it's clear that you know, each seal, one went west and one went east. Now if I look at latitude, but they both you know, return to the same place. You know, in latitude, they're very similar. They both went to the edge of the ice. But I've also put on the ice concentration. And so we can see that when they started, they, there was zero ice at all. But as they went south, it got thicker and thicker. And the same with temperature. You know, it's about six degrees at Heard Island at the surface, and then it's, a, it's, it's less than zero because it's salt and water when they get to the, the coast. Anyway, thank you. That's it. Okay, thank you.